Thank you, Renee. For a moment there, I was trying to figure out who she was talking about. <laughs> Good afternoon, graduates. Oh, let's try that again. Good afternoon, graduates. On this day and during this time, we have come to celebrate those of you who have taken the risk and pursued their goals of graduating high school. Life is filled with accomplishments, both big and small, and all deserve to be recognized, acknowledged, and celebrated. That's the first insight, insight I want to leave you with this afternoon. Some of you have traveled far to get here this evening. Some of you have traveled to see a loved one graduate, and some of you are that graduate. My, what a long journey it has been for you to sit in the seat you're sitting in now. Take a moment first. Acknowledge yourself for doing what it took you to get to this day. All the plans you had to make, all the money that you and your parents had to spend, the conditions, the collaboration, the coordination you had to do, all the pieces and parts that worked and those that didn't. In truth, you have done an outstanding job. Now turn to the person next to you and congratulate them for making it here today. You have no idea what it took for them to get here but they have no idea what it took for you to get here either. So congratulate each other anyway without judgment. They made it, and so did you. And this is interesting. A graduation is a ceremony where a commencement speaker, like me, spends 10 minutes talking to 80 plus students dressed in identical caps and gowns about the tremendous value of individuality in success. <laughs> I cannot tell you the absolute key to success, but I can certainly tell you one of the keys to failure is trying to please everyone. Life is much like today, filled with moments and opportunities to acknowledge oneself and to commend others for their efforts. Others you won't, who won't even know what it really took you to do what you did and vice versa. Nor will they realize the, the road you traveled, but that's okay. In this 21st century, it is you sitting in that, those seats who will determine what you will and will not spend your energy, effort, passion, and contributions on. You are the one who will determine your fate. You have the ultimate power to determine your destiny. I once stood where you are 60 years ago, and I look at some of you shaking your head and saying, you mean they had graduations way back then? Yes, we had graduations way back then. And my dreams were to become a renowned surgeon, to cure everybody, even though I wasn't God, I had planned my future carefully. I had taken all the math and science courses I needed. I had an A average. I was ready to go, waiting for graduation day. About two weeks before graduation, I got a call from my counselor who asked me to come to her office. She said, Natalie, you are in danger of not graduating. I said, what? How could I not be graduating? I've got an A average, and I've done everything I'm supposed to do. She said, well, your biology teacher said you failed to do one of the requirements in her class. You failed to dissect and label the rabbit. I said, are you kidding me? I'm not dissecting a rabbit. It's nasty and bloody. Besides, I can't stand the sight of blood. The counselor looked at me and shook her head. You want to be a surgeon? Well, anyway, enough about my life. And by the way, I did end up dissecting the dumb rabbit. 
although I did what a lot of you have done, I did my best to try and get out of it. I learned one serious thing. I have to face my obstacles. This was my first experience at a roadblock. Face your obstacles and roadblocks that require change. Sometimes you have to rethink your goals, rethink them and move forward. Learn from that experience. I have a couple of suggestions for you all today. Number one, understand what is important to you and learn to value most in life your relationships. At the end of the day, it's your relationships that are gonna matter the most. Not the money you make, but the relationships and the people. Choose wisely whom you will surround yourselves with and make sure that they have the same ideals and beliefs that you have. Learn to let go with ease and grace to a past that no longer serves you or to anyone negative that you meet. Learn how to say no to those people and places and things that no longer feel good or supportive to you. Release them with blessings, good wishes, and close those chapters that need to end as quickly and as gracefully as you can. Don't be afraid to fail. That's my greatest message. When you are free from self-doubt, you fail better because you're willing then to listen to criticism. You do not become so preoccupied with that failure that you forget how to learn from it, grow from it, and move on. When you believe in yourself, you succeed better. Hours spent questioning, doubting, and fearing can better be spent working, exploring, and living. As you graduate, take on challenges. Chances are you will not be making a million bucks on your first job. In fact, you may not even get the first, second, or third interviews. You may never become the, uh, the head of a C, or I'm sorry, you may never become the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. But then again, you may. Who's to know? Who's to decide? The important thing is that you've already taken the initial steps that were needed to build for yourself a promising future. Every class that you've taken, every lab that you've had, every single grade that you've gotten have been preparing you to adapt to your challenges and changes, especially those 745 classes or those college classes or AP classes that you thought were gonna kill you. I know those were tough, but as you know, it's a tough world out there and nothing's handed to you. You will earn everything you get. People, companies, and systems will continue to support you. Some will test you, some will disappoint you, and some will challenge you, but believe in yourself. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO and founder of Facebook, created a social network platform which is credited with transforming how millions of us interact. He was not always heralded as a brilliant young man, but few people can rival Mark in his desire to change our world through the innovative use of technology. In middle school, he was thought to be quite a strange boy. His ideas were not readily accepted in the beginning, but as you can see, Mark didn't let criticism define him. He forged ahead. It is you who will decide how to handle each hurdle, each obstacle in your life. I know you can. I believe in you. Do not minimize yourself or the impact you have on the world. If you think you're too small to make a difference, think about what would happen if you had a mosquito in the bed. Small, but powerful, and can really make a difference in how you react. You've taken a big step towards your future. You've taken the step toward bettering your family and your community. You have worked hard and spent months learning new skill sets. Our complex technical world requires education and skills that were never needed before in the past 
but they're needed now. Ultimately, your well-educated class, your generation, will benefit all of us in the future. Today, I want you to remember that you are all still learning, whether you're 16 or 91, and that learning and living is something that you do actively every day. Do your best you can to live the life that you imagine. Remember to acknowledge yourself and examine often your life to be sure it's the one you enjoy. Many people find it challenging just to be themselves. I ask you today to be willing to be vulnerable, to take risks, and to be who you are. You are not only a force for your future, but you will lead companies, you will lead governments, and you will lead societies of our futures too. So I thank you. I acknowledge you for getting to this moment. No matter how you got here, I know some of you have a special thank you for Google, Wikipedia, and the guy who invented copy and paste. But all kidding aside, you are, you are here and you did it. I ask you to do these few things. Live your life with an attitude of gratitude. Take delight in honoring others. Give generously and selflessly and without expectation of return. Give gifts of praise, patience, and respect. Recognize your blessings and be thankful and appreciate the many gifts that are given to you by others. I know you've already done it, but I would like personally to thank the amazing, incredible people who hold up this awesome institution, and that is the principals, the administration, and the incredible teachers of Nova Academy. I've been an educator for 53 years, and I've never known a group of teachers who were more qualified, more committed, more caring, and more loving than the ones we have at NOVA. How do you thank those hands that cuddled you as babies and held your hands and helped you learn to walk? Those hands have continued to help you through the years in countless ways. So, I just want to thank your parents and your families for their never-ending commitment to each of you. <laughs> Lastly, I ask you this, and I leave you with these words. Remember to dream. Have faith in your dreams, and let that faith inspire you to action Dreams are not realized in the microwave. They are slow cooked on top of the stove and sometimes they burn and boil over and you have to start all over again. But don't let the sight, don't lose sight of your dreams when failure rears its ugly head. The ingredient you need most of all to complete your dream dish is perseverance. As poet Langston Hughes said, hold fast to your dreams for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. I wish you blessings for years to come. I wish you happiness and success. But most of all, I wish you love. Thank you, Mrs. Battersby. It is now my special honor to certify that each of these graduates has met NOVA Academy's requirements and the curriculum approved by the State of California for graduation. I would like to introduce Mrs. Meir and Mrs. McGilvery, who will be reading our graduate names. <laughs> 